All right, uh, welcome to another uh, topic today. Uh, we're going to cover uh, what's called the need for information security. If you're in the university class, this will be module two. You can also see something comparable in a test out and also a use certify or any of the uh, materials that you might want to look at, right? So just use it to follow. I'm just gonna do a brief summary. I will show you a slide deck. And then uh, hopefully you can um, understand the concept that we're talking about. So the other issue about why do we really need, need information security, right? It's a very broad uh, topic. So here in our brief uh, discussion, let's see if you can understand with me why we need information security. So I'm gonna change my slide deck to project the other one for you guys so I see my own, right? So again, this is my information on here that you can Follow me on uh, you know, the social media, YouTube. I suggest you subscribe to this uh, video so you can at least uh, the, to the channel so you can get the video. There's a disclaimer here. This is the lawyer and me. Uh, we're using some slide decks. Some belong to me. Some belong to another entity. So copyright. So I will tell you that everything is protected by copyright. Again, just because you're taking this uh, uh, training or watching this video, it's not a substitute for a robust, information security, countermeasures, legal advice, use of a blue team or red team, of course, vulnerability assessment. So please eh, do the right thing. In this module, briefly, we're going to look at, uh, when you finish this module, you'll be able to at least do the following, discuss the need for InfoSec or cybersecurity, explain why a successful InfoSec program is the shared responsibility of the entire individuals in your organization, and if you were to list the threats posed to your information security and the common attacks associated with those threats. And list some form common information security um, uh, issues, right? <clears throat> so here, uh, if you notice, I'm using an interesting background here. I chose not to blow my screen or use um, a virtual background. So you have the information on both companies here, right? All right. So. The primary mission of most information security program is basically just to ensure that uh, your assets, which will be your information system that house them, uh, all things that compose what's called an asset, that they remain safe and useful. Uh, the old idea is that if your threats do not exist, right, your resources could be used exclusively for other purposes. Right? So we must be cognizant of the attack. So usually I tell people that obviously you replace the the two S's in assets with dollar figures so you can understand the importance, right? Uh, so for information security uh, program, there's four things that we want you to be aware of. You can look at them in the slide later on. I want to understand protecting your organization, the ability to function, protecting the data and information that your organization collects and uses, enabling... Um, uh, the safe operation of applications running on your system, and of course, safeguarding uh, your information security, uh, your, your technology assets. Uh, there's a certification called CISM or CISM. It focuses a lot on thinking like a manager, but in general, anyway, anything about information security, you have to balance the needs of the business with uh, what you're trying to secure, right? So I always say, uh, business needs always trump security needs because if the business was not there, you have nothing to secure, correct? So just understand when it's a conflict, you have to balance uh, the needs of the organization. Right? Business always wins. So protecting the functionality of your organization, you need to understand what this deck is talking about in terms of uh, uh, all three communities of interest. Of uh, since all three communities of interest are responsible for facilitating your security program. Uh, everybody that you can think of, we're going to divide it. The other idea is uh, without data, your organization does not exist, right? You need data to do everything that you want to do. You need to protect data in transit, data in process, or data at rest, right? Uh, the security countermeasures, data at rest will be what you protect with like encryption, uh, such as AES encryption or symmetric encryption. Data in uh, transit is what you protect, like using VPN for the tunneling. Of course, data in process, we talk about stuff like a homomorphic uh, encryption, right? But anyway, just understand that we have we have to protect our data, and we have three types of controls: managerial, which is also known as administrative; technical, which is also known as logical; 
and then your physical controls. You should know what this means. Uh, managerial will be like your policies, such as acceptable use policy. Your technical would be uh, I mean, maybe uh, configuring your firewall. Your physical would be stuff like uh, man traps, torn style, uh, security guards, right? Just understand that uh, you need these safeguards for you to use the IT systems, right? So your job in information security as an analyst or specialist is to really protect the assets, technology, the technology assets of your organization. Because IT is supposed to add value, not uh, uh, detract value, right? So you might have a security, uh, additional security that you may need as your organization grows. So what I implement today might not be what I implement in uh, uh, three years time, right? So some terms that you must be aware of here is uh, what is considered a threat, an attack, an exploit, and a vulnerability. So please know these uh, four terms. A threat is basically anything that is a risk to uh, your organizational assets, right? Or I also a phrase is something that can compromise the CIA triad, which is the confidentiality, integrity, and availability that you should be able to remember from the last uh, <clears throat> uh, lecture or last training. So an attack would be intentional or unintentional. Either can damage or compromise, again, the CIA triad of your uh, of the assets, right? So we say unintentional because unintentional could mean uh, an insider, like an employee that is not well-trained and makes a mistake that you know, makes you uh, an adversary exploit your vulnerability. Of course, the exploit means uh, how do I take advantage of the uh, vulnerability, right? How do I, since technic technical technique used to compromise your your system, right? And of course, vulnerability is just any weakness, right? Or in your asset or your defense uh, controls, such as say maybe a weak password, right? And so this is a table that um, requires you to at least try. You can freeze this and try and ma match to the left to the right. That would be a good uh, study mechanism for you. All right, this would be the correct answer. So what I suggest you do is look at this on a piece of paper and then try to match the definitions on the left to the right and then look up the answer here. All right, so this is a world internet usage. This goes only as far back as 2020. 2020, so just understand that we might have some more current statistics, but sometimes collection of the data is a little behind. You can see from Africa, Asia, uh, the worldwide total of uh, use of the internet Right, you now say say like in um, Africa, the continent of Africa, you have about uh, this is one point three, but it's a little more now. I think it's one point eight, and you know the population of the world is eight billion now, with Asia being the most, uh, India being the most populous uh, country in that continent. Where you see percentage of uh, internet users and the penetration, this will just shows you that we have a lot of people using the internet today. It says about total of 62% of the world is using the internet, uh, which means there's more opportunities for uh, the adversary to take advantage of what we're doing, right? More uh, potential for exploits, right? Uh, this is as of so the statistics as of July uh, 20, 2020. You can now see the threats from internal sources. Uh, so you see like inability and willingness to follow established policies. You tell employees don't... Uh, I go to certain websites and they go to certain websites. Of course, that might mean that your security administrator didn't put in a, a place. You should have like a proxy to prevent them from doing that, right? And theft of organizational information assets. There's things you can do about this from data loss prevention for the actual uh, assets inside or physical uh, protection by uh, making sure you have an inventory, right? Of uh, assets. But just look at this, there are different uh, unauthorized access or privilege escalation. You see the percentage of that. We always say that human beings are the most weakest link in your security chain. That's why you need end user education, right? So that's uh, more threats from an internal source. It, it would take me a while to define all these terms, but if you're interested, you can send me an email. Like web defacement means I go into your website and I, you know, maybe change it or post things that uh, you're not supposed to be there, maybe because I don't like you, right? All right, so now look at external sources. So internal will be obviously an employee, Somebody that's already inside the organization. External, you see web defacement and you see uh, on site. If you compare these statistics, you will see that, for example, uh, web defacement. Uh, 
uh, you have 43% for somebody internal and then external, you have only about, uh, I think it's 8.9%. Uh, so certain threats are more, uh, they come more from internal people than external, right? Uh, so what I perceive threats on the assets, you will not see like malware attacks, it's like 1.7. Uh, so it's not a threat, it's 1.7, but severe threat on this side. So try to read this. I think the last thing I just said was looking at the left side, but look at the right side to, to see what, what you're talking about, right? Uh, SQL injection, for example, uh, these are basically, for me, somebody who doesn't, a database administrator or somebody who's a database that is not set up properly. Like if I make a query to a database and I say one is equals to one, one is equals to one is always true, right? So that should not be allowed as a query into the database. That will return more things that I need, right? Outdated organizational software, that's a major problem, right? Just know the ranking, right? That's probably somebody needs to lose their job because you're not doing patch management, right? Make sure, make sure you know the, the, uh, the changes or the vulnerabilities to that software that the, the, the uh, manufacturer, right? Our developer has already issued a, uh, patches to and make sure you uh, implement the patches immediately, right? So I want to see, uh, so this is just, look at this, like for example, a uh, uh, loss due to earthquake would depend on which part of the world they're looking at. So if I was doing um, what is called a risk um, matrix or something, where I have, uh, you know, so risk is calculated as a likelihood multiplied by the um, impact, right? So like if I'm living in um, UAE, I was telling some students uh, last week, the likelihood of a uh, earthquake in UAE is very low, like in Dubai, very low. But if I'm living in California, then it's really high. So I would need to take that into consideration, right? All right, so we have what's called KPEC that you should understand, which is the common uh, attack uh, pattern enumeration and classification. So this is just a tool that we can use to understand um, attacks, right? So you can, this is a website hosted by MITRE. MITRE also has a attack uh, framework. It's a non-profit organization. It's a good uh, repository or database uh, that you can search to get more information. So let's look at what's called 12 categories of uh, threats to information security, everywhere from compromise to intellectual property, uh, all the way down to uh, actual uh, physical uh, theft, right? So if you see on here uh, an example, so for espionage or trespass, unauthorized access and or data collection, right? Force of nature, we've already seen that earthquake, fire, uh, extortion with blackmail, information um, disclosure, or you see, of course, software attacks would be virus, warm, macro, denial of service. Even technical failures like equipment failure is considered a, a category of threat, right? So you might, you, want to, you might want to pause this video, this deck here, and then look at it in detail. Uh, so this is a compromise of IP or intellectual property it means somebody has stolen my. So there are there is a, traditionally there are three classes of IP or intellectual properties, which is uh, uh, copyright, patents, and trademark. But we also now have trade secrets, right? Trade secrets is what I'm developing. I should proprietary to my organization. Copyright for written works, trademarks like logos, and of course patents for like invention, right? So these are the attacks or compromises specifically targeted uh, IP, right? Would I be planting a uh, malware there that's gonna allow me to spy or, or what's called data exfiltration, meaning steal the information, right? So there are watchdog organizations that have to do with this. In terms of theft, huh? just be aware of them. Um, so let's, uh, I might skip this slide, but usually when you hear about QoS, uh, the whole confusion is we're talking about, if I have data and I have, um, uh, video or voice. So most of the time I'm talking about QS is really, I'm going to try to prioritize your voice or your video over your data, right? Because if I'm talking on the phone, if I'm using VoIP, voice over internet protocol. By the way, if I say anything in my videos and it's a technical term you don't understand, please send me a message. But because I'm creating this for a wide range of people, I might just say something thinking, right? So voice over internet protocol for like telephones. Um, so what I normally do is this, or what you should be doing is when we hear the word QoS, I'm going to say um, voice data because of uh, what's called jitter or latency. 
should have priority over so voice and video should have over priority over data, right? So so this just this slide just talking about deviations from uh, quality of service. Uh, but just remember that's what QS talks about, right? So uh, also SLA service level agreement usually has to do with uh, a contract between me and maybe service provider about what what I expect. So if they deviate from this, then I can file a lawsuit or we can come and renegotiate uh, our contract, right? To see why didn't they fulfill their, their obligation, right? Uh, this is just a, a start talking about the average cost of uh, downtime, according to a company called Fusion Connect. Uh, the issues you might have with internet will be your, your internet service provider, right? Uh, not being um, reliable, right? Or using a, a web service uh, hosting company, like GoDaddy or whatever, and maybe you have some issues with them, right? Kyoto service, power regularity, if you live in some part of the world, uh, this will be, even though we say QS is talking more about priority of voice, video, but they, these are issues about quality of service too that they, you should have an idea of. So the type of power fluctuation, blackout, from brownout, fault, noise, sag, spike, or surge. This could be information security issues, right? So when you have sensitive, sensitive uh, equipment, they're vulnerable or it can be damaged by this kind of fluctuation. If you are living in a part of the world, you can know that this could affect uh, how your UPS works, how your hard drive works, even your, your desktop, right? You will stop performing because of these electrical uh, problems, right? Question, a short-term decrease in electrical power availability is known as so I'm using a slide deck, which is PowerPoint slide deck, right? So it's not, I'm not going to cover everything in depth. But here, the answer to this is uh, sag. If you think about somebody wearing pants and sagging their pants, well, whether you consider that uh, short term or long term, that is uh, what a short term decrease in electrical power is known as uh, sag. All right, espionage or trespass. Somebody wants to get access to information that they should not have access to. That's what espionage means, right? Uh, this could be maybe from an intelligence uh, uh, perspective. If you use things like uh, shoulder softening, I'm looking over your shoulders to do that. There are countermeasures over this, right? The whole idea is an unauthorized person is getting access to my information, right? This is a good picture of a guy looking over your shoulders. Of course, you know, privacy screen will help and being aware of your environment will help, right? So uh, let's talk about... Um, uh, different type of hackers and how they, they affect your organization. So if you have an expert hacker, they, are, they have a lot of skills mastery. They can create software themselves. Uh, they can develop uh, scripts to hack into your system. But we also have unskilled ones that what they call script kiddies, like the younger, not younger as in age, but younger in the industry. They, are, they don't, they, can, they just usually like install uh, tools developed by somebody else, right? And they want to be able to brag about what they did, right? So this would be like, uh, this guy's talking about a hacker profile. You know, one thing about the internet today is you can actually create a thick online profile for yourself, right? Just so that uh, hackers uh, have a range from teenagers all the way to even octo octogenarians, right? So a uh, cracker is somebody who's uh, uh, an expert or a, a hacker, right? And you see the word freaker, hack the public telephone system to make free calls or disrupt your services. So that's a uh, cracker freaker. Uh, password attack, there's usually only three types of password attack that you should be aware of. Um, using brute force, uh, using dictionary attack. So brute force just means I keep trying and trying until I get through, right? Whatever word I'm using, I have a word list maybe. Dictionary, I'm you using common dictionary words. A rainbow table, which is based on hash. So passwords are not stored in plain text today. There's the, it's the hash value that is stored. When you log into a system today, it takes your password, it hashes it, and it stores it, right? So rainbow table takes a set of pre-computed pre hash and uh, matching password, and you try to use it to, to hack into your system, right? We always say that the best defense to a rainbow table attack is to use a sorting. So sorting is you enter your password. I uh, The system adds a random value called a salt and then hashes that. 
and of course stores stores the hash and the the salt. Next time you log in with the password, it takes your password, it takes retrieves that hash, you retrieve the salt, appends it to your password that you just entered, and then hashes it, and then tries to match the two hash values with the match, and of course, it lets you into your system, right? So this is just giving you some kind of alphabet set in terms of password. If you want to, there's a, what's called password meter online. Enter your password and it can tell you if it's strong enough. So this is telling you eight, eight uh, lead password, the odds of cracking it, estimated time to crack is 0 0.36 seconds. However, like you say, 16 uh, lead password, it gives you a big odd and it says you can take 2.3, uh, 2,362.1 years to crack. Of course, if you mix it up with uh, small letters, uh, capital letters, uh, numbers, and symbols, it makes it even better, right? But again, the best defense, even that, is to have multi-factor authentication. I'm right? just giving you some examples in here, right? So, so normally what I do is I, I give my students exercises. So, I'll usually tell you to research password meter strength and find the best site to test your strength of your password, right? And you can present it to the class, right? And including the time to crack. Or a group could also decide to research Kin and Able and explain how it works. So Kin and Able is like an old school tool for cracking password. If you try to install it on your system, Windows Defender will see it as a, a virus, right? So normally you have to like, I can put it in, when I do it, I put it in like a virtual machine inside the Oracle virtual box, but I put it in a zip file and then the system will not see that as a malware, right? Uh, another group of research that I want, John the Reaper. John the Reaper is very good. It's available on even on Kali Linux or standalone, right? Uh, just try and check into that, right? So forces of nature are also, uh, so we when we see, uh, threats to information security. We have the the natural, which will be force of nature from th tornadoes, and you have the, of course, man-made ones, right? So just know they're classified in two different ways. Uh, again, human er errors again could be something that is done with malicious intent or ignorance, as I said, right? Inexperience, improper training, right? Again, employees are the most as the are the greatest threats to an organization. Insider threat, right? So see this uh, little funny uh, uh, video here um, about, uh, it, it says, Tommy, two-story convicted burglar, and then wanna be hacker, which is like a script kitty there. And of course, uh, this guy confused the, the copier with the shredder when copying uh, some analysis report. That's major issues, right? All right, so. Uh, these are things that employees mistaken lead to besides loss of money, reputation, uh, you know, breach, right? Social engineering is a technique. It's one of the most effective techniques out there. So no matter how much technical security you have, social engineering can help beat that. You just need to convince somebody to click on a link, right? So with a business email, uh, advanced fee fraud, um, there's a slide I'm going to skip because it's annoying. It talks about the, I'll talk about this. It talks about an example of a Nigerian 419 fraud letter, but we know that Nigerians are not the main ones that do uh, fraud percentage wise, but because of uh, maybe publicity, how I want to say it. If you look at the top 10 uh, countries that um, uh, cyber criminals come from, Nigeria is not even in the top 10. You've got Russia, US, um, China, even uh, Ukraine, even Brazil and all them are there. Uh, but just the point is that employer will cause zero trust. Just don't say because somebody's sending you an email from the US or, or an IP address from the US, I mean, you should trust it, but no, right? Let everybody uh, authenticate into your system using the same strict uh, credentials. So we no longer talk about what's called a trust, but verify, we talk about zero trust uh, module. Uh, this is an exam, a phishing email, right? Trying to lure you to do something, right? It says, you have one new alert message. Please lo log into blah, 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 click. So of course the trick is to always pass your, your mouse over the link and see what it says on the lower left-hand corner. But don't click. Take website. You can, the funny thing is that if you're doing uh, learning to do um, pen testing, 
particle hacker, you will see these tools uh, that you can use to create um, fake websites. So you can so, so you can know what it, what the adversary does, right? From um, the harvester, a bunch of them. Just open up Kali. I, I can, if I have time, I can show you a quick uh, Kali Linux or Parrot uh, display. But I, maybe I do that as a separate video for you, right? So information extortion, also known as cyber extortion, right? This is common in a credit card number fraud. They steal information from the computer system and demand compensation for its return and non-disclosure. In fact, current ransomware, when they put malware and block your system, it doesn't just ask you to provide a payment by whatever cryptocurrency. They also tell you if you, if you do not, um, that's my next slide, by the way, if you do not pay, we, are, we will also disclose your information out there like in the dark web so people will have access to confidential information, right? So the the um, ransomware, the malware attack of it on your system, as I just said, that denies you entry. Whereas by lock screen and encryption, basically it's a standard one. Bam, give me uh, money and I'll release the, I'll give you the code for you to um, decrypt and have access to your file, right? Storage or vandalism, uh, it can mean anything from uh, I'm just trying to like steal the information. It could be like a somebody, a criminal or a hacker, this that doesn't like your viewpoint, right? Right. So it's just telling that like cyber terrorism or cyber warfare is a much more serious version of uh, a hacking, right? So I already mentioned website defacing. He talks about it here. It's gonna really affect your <clears throat> your organizational reputation, right? So hacktivist is, hacktivist is somebody that, based on their ideological differences with you, is like an activism hacker. They hack it to your system, right? Okay, all right. So um, software attacks, you're just talking about one. The main thing, just know there's malware, there are so many. I uh, talk about zero day attack, know that the zero day attack is an attack that um, has not been seen before, meaning that the developers don't have any opportunity to have developed uh, a tool, right, to prevent it, right, right. And so, uh, the different types of malware are virus, worm, Trojan, uh, polymorphic, uh, hoaxes, backdoor slash trapdoor, denial of service, and DDoS. And then you have a, a mail bomb, and also you have a logic logic bomb, right? All right. So this is the definition. Mal a virus. It attaches to an existing program. Malware replicates by itself. Trojan is basically disguised as a, something good, like um, a helpful uh, antivirus, where you click it and it affects your system. This is from Greek mythology, where they couldn't penetrate the other kingdom, and they sent the gift of a gift of a horse only to find out that the horse that they led into the kingdom had uh, enemy soldiers inside, right? All right, so there are two types of uh, denial of service attack. This one affects the A in the availability of the CIA trial. Uh, so basically I can send a, multiple, a lot of uh, systems. I can send a lot of like uh, a connection requests to you and, I, and uh, maybe you don't have enough uh, resources or overwhelm your resources and maybe your system crashes. I can use a bunch of systems. That would be the distributed denial of service. I can use a bunch of, uh, uh, we call them bots, IoT devices. I turn them into a robot and I use it to attack your system. So the most dangerous malware attacks to date is an interesting list. Uh, the Melissa one comes out of Florida. I remember that back then, uh, I love you virus. Uh, different types. And see here, like, the Melissa one, 1999, who, um, I think Miami, Florida, at that time, that one hit. Same thing with I love you. Uh, and uh, of course, you've heard of the wanna cry virus. So the stock next it attacks what I think scalers like ICS system, which is uh, supervisory control or industrial control systems. So here, this one, there's always a fear about who was responsible. Was it the US or was it the Israeli? Because it was against an Iranian uh, system. All right. Um, so attack replications, uh, 
So example here, if I go to an IP scan and attack uh, involving a range of IP address, uh, service ports uh, that I uh, know that you can have open, right? I can use that. A web browser, if any infectious system has right access to any web page, it makes all of the contents infectious, right? Users who browse this page infect their machines. So that would be similar to what's called a drive-by uh, download. Uh, talk about the virus, unprotected shares of files. Uh, mass mail. So this uh, SNMP, this is used for remote management of network and computer devices, right? So by using uh, the widely known and common passwords that were employed like an earlier version of this uh, protocol, there are programs that can gain control of the device. Of course, most current versions have closed this uh, vulnerability. It's just telling you that these are uh, vectors or pathways for people to affect your system, right? So this is an example of a denial of service attack, right? A software attack like a mail bombing, you know, you get large quantities of email to you, right? Of course, spam is just an annoying uh, 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 messages, right? Uh, unsolicited. This is, this is a news one. So packet sniff uh, is both good and bad, like Wireshark. I'm using it to see what's happening on my network. Uh, so maybe I can see the health of my network. And then we also have um, uh, something else here. I think that other distance fell over. Mm, interesting. Right. Oops. It's like saying to me, don't use me anymore. Don't use me anymore. Using it to try and cover something, right? All right. IP spoofing, basically, I make you the attacker. The bad guy makes the IP be the same as somebody else's IP address, right? This is an example here. Uh, this other types of attacks continues farming in which I have to redirect uh, direct users to an illegitimate site for the purpose of obtaining their private information. Man in the middle, which is now called on path attack, is what this is. I'm trying to uh, uh, insert myself between two legitimate uh, uh, nodes or two people who are communicating between themselves, right? So that's man in the middle. All right, so communicating interception attacks include all of the following except. So think about this here. Uh, it's a very easy knowledge check question. The only thing here that has nothing to do with uh, intercepting communication between two endpoints is uh, ransomware, right? Right? All right, so we'll talk about hardware failure could be also a threat to... Um, your information system, right? Uh, so, what any software developer, programmer, whatever you want to call yourself today, should be aware of what's called the OWASP, which is the Open Web Application Security Project. They always list their top 10 uh, uh, vulnerabilities. So, please try and read it, go online and check it, right? When I teach, uh, like, uh, on advanced security outside of the classroom, we look at the OWASP top 10 to see what's going on right so sql injection i already mentioned that right um cross-site scripting and cross-site request forgery uh, re uh read up i can spend a little more time on that and uh, and another uh, video uh failure to handle inputs uh issues with um software like if you're expecting uh, numbers People should not be able to enter a text, right? Or vice versa, right? So just be able to check it. All right. Um, some other, this is obsolescence, like outdated uh, infrastructure. This, these are security risks, right? Uh, of course, theft is a threat, right? So this electronic threat is a more complex problem. The evidence of crime is not readily available. Physical threat can be controlled easily, right? Uh, so I was trying to keep this under 30 minutes, but it wasn't really possible. Uh, information security, just know the, I've said there's a four functions of that. Uh, from everywhere from ensuring the security of information assets, 
the safe and useful, protected organizations, ability to function, enabling safe operational applications, and protecting data, uh, right? Collected and used, right? Just as says in the screen in there. Uh, Note the various threats to your information security from uh, espionage, uh, compromised intellectual property, extortion, and then uh, even stuff like uh, hardware failure. So look at this uh, statement in here. It's more like for you to reflect, right? When security needs and business needs collide, business needs win, right? So when security and business collide, business wins, right? Uh, and you can think about it yourself hypothetically if you think there's times or circumstances where it's a completely, where this is completely, this is not completely true. And what could be an example of that, right? Uh, so since I have a broad range of audience, I don't know who's in information security and who's not. But the question here is, if you're working in the area, what does the statement indicate about how you should work with other units in your company? Right? Some uh, videos on cybersecurity and the importance of information security that they are here. Uh, security quotient is a 1.49 1. 1. minutes uh, video. CIA tried, if you're confused about that, you can watch the video that I've already posted about what is cybersecurity. One on what, what is information security? It's just a 39 uh, second uh, video, right? And then the two point, the two, four, two minutes and 43 second video. All right, um, for my students, reach out to me about the office hours and I will let you know when I'm available, either via Zoom or uh, in person on campus. So thank you for watching this video. As always, as I will say, if you want to get more, uh, try and subscribe so you can get um, notified when I post any uh, recent um, updates or videos. Like since I go to the video and I decide to cut out some portions, so I'm doing it naturally as I'm going through the material. All right, so have a great uh, week or a great day.